GOP-1 medications like Ozempic are transforming weight loss, but if you're skipping strength training, gut support, or proper sleep, you're leaving your results on the table. Today, I'll show you how to turn these medications into a full body transformation tool by integrating them into a holistic plan that supports your hormones, digestion, and long-term health. We all know that GOP-1 medications are all the rage. Everyone's talking about them, on them, debating them, should they or should they not? Here's the thing that I hear over and over again, I'm gonna be honest, I've struggled with this one myself, is GLP-1 and taking a GLP-1 medication holistic, right? We've been talking a lot about holistic medicine, a holistic lifestyle, what it means to really treat the whole body. And in comes this medication promising to solve everything. And it seems so sexy and appealing and an easy solution to something that so many people, including myself, to be 100% honest, struggle with, which is gaining weight, gaining weight through different phases of life. And why not, right? But then you're struggling with weight, I'm holistic. So is this really natural or approved? Well, we're gonna break it down right here. Are GLP-1 medications compatible with a holistic lifestyle? And here's a teaser, but you're gonna have to listen to get the details. It's a mini yes. And I say a mini yes only if you do a couple of things. Let's talk about GLP-1s now. If you're in the grocery store, you've probably seen where you've got foods, you've got supplements, you've got exercise programs all saying GLP-1 friendly. This is what you can do if you are interested in replicating this idea of trying to manage GLP-1, which remember is a hormone that at the end of the day is responsible for how the body takes up blood sugar and glucose and prevents us from storing or holding on to fat. One of the biggest issues we've had nowadays in the last hundred years or so is that we've developed an epidemic of insulin resistance where we just have an overconsumption society and we have a more sedentary society, but coupled with the issue of just being overexposed to toxins, exogenous estrogens, all these things that at the end of the day make insulin resistance worse. So that's why we're even talking about this to begin with. When GLP-1 medications first came on the scene, they were prescribed mainly in one form called semaglutide, and they were prescribed at some very specific standard dosages, right? You might be on one. Since the early days, I think it's now been about three or four years now that they've been a part of the medical landscape, we now have many different varieties of GLP-1 medications. These include things like trizepatide. There's some different forms or names you know this by, Wegovi, Manjaro. They're now not only injectable forms, they're oral forms as well. So there are more options, you know, needless to say. Now, conventionally, when you guys go in and try to have this conversation with your regular MD and you're thinking about a GLP-1 medication, I'm noticing and I'm hearing back that the advice is falling into a couple of different camps. The first camp is like, you don't need it. You don't have a high BMI. You don't have high body fat. You're not obese. It's not for you. The second camp is like, okay, here it is. You can take it, but you can only take it at these particular doses. The medication's prescribed, and that's kind of the end of the story. There's usually a disclaimer to, hey, watch for side effects, but that's about it. Some of the side effects that we all agree on include many of the gut-based side effects, cramping, belly pain, bloating, reflux, nausea. And there are patients that absolutely don't tolerate it and have found that they have to take themselves off of it. So it's out there, it's an option. You may be choosing it. There are many different forms and many different ways to take it. But what do you do when you believe in holistic medicine and a holistic lifestyle? And what do I do when I wanna bring Eastern and Western medicine together? So what does Eastern medicine say? about GLP-1, right? They didn't have those medications back then, and they didn't talk about things like GLP-1, but this is what they did talk about. And when I say Eastern, I'm talking about Chinese medicine, Ayurvedic medicine, other older systems of medicine where sort of the literature of how to care and how to heal has been handed down over generations. And we are now trying to apply it today because it was so valuable, even before they had research and, and clinical trials and all these things that we talk about today. So the fundamental concept around weight gain or belly fat from an Eastern perspective is really focused in on the gut and the liver. That's ground zero. And that gut and liver not acting appropriately, you being not able to digest your foods well, not detoxing well, having a lot of anger or rage or holding emotions in the gut or in your liver, or a recipe for blood sugar disruption and for gaining weight. 
And that was something that was talked about many, many years ago as well. So in the Eastern perspective, before you think about a medication or in their case, even an herb, you would have a conversation. What does your stress look like? Where's cortisol? You know, are you sleeping through the night? Are you moving throughout the day? You know, are you eating in a way that is supportive for your particular digestive health? And are you detoxing appropriately? And they would try to get a little bit prescriptive, right? And the way they would do so would be to type the patient or the person sitting in front of them. What's your dosha? What's your meridian? What's your constitution, right? These are things we've talked about in many videos on this channel. I hope you've had an opportunity to watch some of them. I'm linking one of them at least right here for you to check out to understand a little bit more about doshas or power types and how that applies to taking care of your health overall. So they brought these principles in and from there worked with a patient one-on-one -on -one to bring them into a healing state. So it was about healing, not necessarily changing a number. You know, in today's culture, we are all about like tracking the numbers and tracking the labs and tracking the data, which is important. And I think when we bring that into an Eastern approach, we really do have something magical and very special. So let's now do something different. What if we took everything from Eastern medicine, but we merged it with this idea of GLP-1 medications and the fact that technology has offered us something that actually helps to balance blood sugar and insulin for people that have been struggling with weight loss and insulin resistance for a really long period of time. This is where I actually had to change too. My first response, we were just talking about this yesterday, my first response to these medications was no, absolutely not. Why would you mess with gut function? Why would you impact the liver? That's gonna be a short-term fix for a long-term terrible outcome. But then we started to understand things a little bit better. If we could use a GLP-1, but if we could microdose it or baby dose it, then we wouldn't have our patients experiencing the side effects that really we hate, which are around gut health and around liver health. So what is the solution when you wanna bring Eastern and Western medicine together? And this is the way we can all move forward. This is what I've been calling whole plus, where it all really needs to work together hand in hand. The way we move forward is to understand that medications and technology have a role in the healthcare equation. We can't dump it, but at the same time to use them without paying attention to the key determinants of health, which include diet, movement, sleep, stress management, and so much more is doing a disservice. So if we are thinking about a GLP-1, here is how we're gonna do it. And this begins the whole plus way of actually prescribing and using GLP-1s in a way that is supportive to the whole body and really embodies a holistic lifestyle plan. All right, we're gonna start, and you're gonna hate me for this, but we have to, we have to start with diet. The number one rule of diet when we're dealing with the GLP-1 is that we don't want the muscle wasting, guys. Just because you're not eating throughout the day doesn't mean it's okay. Typically what we see is a lot of muscle wasting, a lot of collagen decrease. We're seeing skin sagging, so many different side effects of this. Here's how we can solve that. The diet you need to follow if you are thinking about a GLP-1 is actually a high protein diet. And this means eating, first of all, every four hours and trying in those eating intervals to aim for a minimum of around 20 to 30 grams of protein at each serving. Now, most women should average roughly between 90 to 100 grams of protein. Men probably higher, about 120 up to 150 grams of protein. And this is in the initial phases, I would say in the first six weeks particularly, of taking these medications. Protein itself acts like a GLP-1. That allows us to microdose it, give it to you in a quarter or even in a half of a standard dose, and you still get a result. It's beautiful because cutting out food noise, which is what the original semiglutide did, is not enough for long-term weight loss. That is the reason why many folks are saying you have to be on these medications forever. So diet is number one. A part of diet is also getting in the fiber because what the GLP-1 medications can do is slow gut motility. You're not moving things through the gut. So you want a lot of these healthy plant-based foods that have a ton of fiber in it to really help you digest everything appropriately. Here we've got some kale, we have flax seeds, great sources of fiber to help really support the digestive system on a medication like this. And it also helps to bring that blood sugar down. 
All right, moving on from protein and fiber, you do also need something that helps you to digest all that protein and fiber effectively. So a lot of times we want our patients on a digestive enzyme of some sort. Now, again, they could get it from food, things like avocados actually, believe it or not, have some digestive enzymes, or sometimes you may need a supplement to support, but that becomes something that's very important. So protein in various forms, fiber, digestive enzymes, and then also getting some healthy fats in, that is a part of a healthy way to eat while you're on a GLP-1. If you are not eating at all, that is not good. You're probably muscle wasting, you're in a calorie deficit, which for the short term will serve you, but in the long term, you're gonna rebound and gain all that weight right back. Okay, let's move on. Movement becomes a part of this plan as well. And movement doesn't have to be heroic, guys. Movement needs to be all throughout the day, 10 minute burst here and there. And even if you can do 20 minutes of zone two cardio paired with some strength training, then you will retain the muscle that you originally had or even build muscle while you're on a GLP-1. Zone two cardio is cardio where you are you can move and you can talk, but you can't necessarily sing or you can't you know recite a poem, but you can still kind of keep things going, right? They usually say there's a whole formula for calculating your heart rate, but roughly it's gonna be about one and a half times your current resting heart rate is where you wanna be in terms of zone two cardio. When it comes to strength training, we don't want people going out there and picking up heavy weights and hurting themselves, right? What you wanna do is start with a lower weight, build gradually, but you do wanna do something. Start anywhere, 20 minutes counts. All right, so movement's important, diet's important. We also know that stress management is incredibly important. And I'm gonna pair stress management and sleep together because I think they kind of go hand in hand. Because at the end of the day, the hormone I'm dealing with there is cortisol. And trying to bring that cortisol level down so that your blood sugar can come down, your insulin can come down, and you can repair throughout the night. So if you are highly stressed, it's important to pull back for a second and do an inventory and just think of like, A, what can you change? And prioritize sleep and make sure you're getting about six to eight hours of consistent sleep at night. If you're not getting that sleep, then we know that cortisol levels are gonna be high, blood sugar is gonna be high, you're gonna be more prone to gaining weight and holding on to weight, you're not gonna have the bandwidth to work on your diet and you stay in that vicious cycle. So stress management, sleep, a big part of the story as well. There are some supplements that I actually like to use for a holistic GLP-1 plan. We've mentioned one already, which was the digestive enzymes to help you break food down. I actually like to include something called glutamine, which rehabs the gut lining and can help. We have it in Belly Fix, which is a, a formula that also has some collagen in it as well and some pre and probiotics too, that actually help to uh, balance the gut out. So this is actually, if you're on a GLP-1, this is actually a good product to be on because you have prebiotics, probiotics, you have some natural digestive enzymes in here, you have an anti-inflammatory, and then you have the collagen and the glutamine to help you build that gut lining back up and help motility too. So this is a good sort of kitchen sink. I always called this the gut kitchen sink and I still am. I still think it, it's a beautiful addition. So those are some of the supplements I like if you're having trouble sleeping, then taking things like Sleep Savior, which has the magnesium, melatonin, and magnolia bark, even trying something like ashwagandha, which helps to modulate your stress levels. These can also be a part of a healthy, holistic GLP-1 plan. So long story short, yes, you can be on a GLP-1 medication and still embody and live a holistic lifestyle. You just have to do it in a way where the medication is microdosed to minimize side effects and impacts to other areas of the body while still accomplishing the result we're after. And you still have to honor the time-tested principles of what makes us all healthy, which is good food, eating consistently, consistent sleep, watching your stress, and really putting all these pieces together. At the end of the day, it's worth it. You're not gonna be one of those people that have to be on a GLP-1 forever. We have so many patients in practice that take it once a month or just take it before our, you know, a major event or take it if they fell off the wagon, so to speak, but they are no longer dependent on the medication for getting their blood sugar, their insulin, and their weight to where it needs to be. All right, I hope this was helpful. I post new videos every week. Don't forget to like and subscribe.